Hi, welcome back to the shop. And on today's quick and dirty video, I'm gonna show you how to fix a bird's nest in your MIG welder. What is a bird's nest? What causes it? And then how to fix it and get you back welding. So if you wanna know more, stick around. All right, so first up, how do you know if you have a bird's nest in your MIG welder? Well, you're gonna be welding, minding your own business, and all of a sudden things are not happening. There's no wire coming out, no welding happening. And often, if you look inside your nozzle, it's gonna look like this. So you can see that, hours and hours of welding without cleaning this thing, spatter has eventually filled up there. Or maybe you just got really too close and your contact tip touched and you have now welded the end of your electrode wire to the end of your contact tip. Now, if your wire is pretty frozen up on the contact tip, it's not a bad idea to lift the lid here. And when you do, if you find that there's a whole bunch of wire wrapped up in here, there's your bird's nest. Now what has happened is you've welded the wire to the end of the contact tip and the feed rollers don't know any better. So they kind of keep trying to feed that wire. And as you're holding the button, eventually the wire decides, well, I'm out of here and takes off and starts building up out here. And uh, it'll keep going as long as you're pushing that trigger button. All right, so now that we know what a bird's nest is all about, we need to know what causes this so that we don't have it happen to us. And really there's only about five reasons why you'd have this and here they are. First up, our spool of wire, it has to be dead clean. If there's any kind of contaminants like rust, maybe you're welding outside or using old wire, or if it's been sitting and there's a ton of dust on this, any of that contaminants goes in with the wire and gets into our liner, into our feed mechanism. And if it gets built up enough, we can actually have it jam up solidly and you're gonna have a bird's nest. Second thing up is your tension on your feed mechanism is set up incorrectly. Now, what I usually find when this is the issue is that somebody has welded the electrode wire to the end of the contact tip. And when they continue to press the button, the feed mechanism, if this is set up properly, will slip on the wire, slightly damaging it while it's kind of slipping, but it slips. Now, if you have this tension too tight, what happens is it's damaging it instead of slipping it. And then eventually it just grabs it and kicks it out and you get your bird's nest. Now I made a great video on how to set up your MIG welder, including a tip on how to set your tensioner properly. So I will put a link above so you can check that out. The third thing it could be is the liner. So the wire feeds all the way through this liner, all the way to the end of our contact tip. And if there's anything resisting the free movement of that wire through this liner, then it's going to stop the wire, which can cause a potential back up in a bird's nest in the machine. So things it could be is an old liner that is just literally worn out. Uh, there could be some rust in there if you're doing this welding outside. Uh, you could also have a liner that's been damaged. Maybe somebody's rolling a dolly over it or it's been bent really harsh angles. Uh, so any kind of damage to the liner can also cause a bird's nest. So the fourth reason for bird's nest and really quite common is that you are welding for hours and hours, maybe days on days without cleaning this, or maybe you've got some incorrect settings going on and you have excess of spatter that's building up on the inside of your nozzle. Now, eventually, if you don't clean this out, that spatter will connect and eventually weld the wire or the electrode right to the contact tip, which stops the wire from moving, but you're still pushing the button, asking those feed rollers to keep driving the wire. And after a couple seconds of doing that, it can start to back up and build up with a bird's nest. Finally, the last problem that might be causing bird's nest in your MIG welder is that you are running with the wrong parts for the size or the diameter wire that you are using. So for example, you could have the wrong size contact tips, wrong size drive feed rollers. Uh, anything that is not matched is gonna have issues. So for example, I've got a 40 thousandths contact tip, but a 35 thousandths wire, and you can see there's quite a lot of play in there that's not gonna be a good fit and could cause some potential issues. And if we were to go the other way where this was 35 thousandths and this was 40 thousandths, as soon as that wire hits that contact tip, it's gonna jam. And if you keep trying to feed it through, it's gonna cause a bird's nest. So make sure you got the right parts in your system. Okay, that's some cool info, but how do we fix this bird's nest so we can get back to welding? Well, first thing is we have to separate the mess of a wire over here from our nice spool wire here. So we're gonna cut this, but we have to be careful because if we just cut that, this is gonna unwrap like crazy and you're gonna have a huge mess and uh, lose a lot of wire that way. So we're gonna clip it and then we're gonna put it somewhere in here. There's a little hole that's already in the spool here. We can just kind of bend it and make sure it stays put while we fix the other part. So let's start with this. All 
Okay, next up we have to get all this wire out of the liner and out of the feed mechanism, but we can't pull this mess the way it is through the feed liner. So we're gonna basically undo these two screws, take this cover plate off, take the tension off, take that feed roller up, and then we can kinda take all of this mess out and clip the wire so that it's just a straight piece going into the liner and that way we can pull it through. Now, really important to note, now that I'm in here and I could possibly touch stuff I don't want to, I've actually got this thing powered down and unplugged so I'm completely safe here. All right, so I've got most of it out here, uh, but I gotta undo this. Okay, and you can see it actually is supposed to go through into the liner here, but it kicked out for some reason. So we're gonna kick this out. And if I can pull a little back, I can't really pull back. So what I wanna do is cut this as close as I can to the end here, so there's a straight section that I can pull through the liner. Now I can try to bend it a little bit too, just so it's more straight, so it's not gonna cause any damage to the liner as I feed it through. Now in this scenario, we've got so much spatter in here that it has literally welded the wire to the end of our contact tip. So we gotta clean this and free it up there so we can pull the wire out. So let's do that. Now, because the wire is welded right to the contact tip, when I try to unspin this, it does spin, but it kind of springs back. And the reason why is I'm kind of winding up the, the wire inside of the liner. So it feels like it'll just keep springing back. And all you gotta do is basically just keep going. It's okay to spring up that wire inside. It's just spinning inside the liner. And after a couple turns here, you'll actually have the contact tip come out like that. And there's the wire. Now. Next step is basically to pull the entire wire right out from the whole liner. So let's do that now. All right, there's the end. So here's your contact tip. We're gonna to try to salvage this so we can just clip that off. And I still remember when I was starting out welding that I saw this after my first couple bird's nest repairs and I always thought, man, what a waste. Like this is just money going into the garbage, but uh, you can't use it, it's useless. And realistically, we're only looking at pennies here. This isn't a lot. So this goes in the scrap bin and then uh, let's clean up and free up this wire from this contact tip. Take a look at your contact tip. If it's seen better days, it's been ground a couple of times already and it's looking haggard, you might want to think about putting a brand new contact tip in instead. And if you do do that, make sure that the orifice or the hole is the same size diameter as the wire that you're running with so you don't have any issues. Now, in this case, I'm gonna to try to salvage this a little bit by taking that little bit of steel weld and the wire that's welded to the end of the contact tip and grinding it just back to the top surface of the copper contact tip. Now, the trick to know when to stop is when you get the top kind of shiny copper, that's about where you want to stop and you'll know you're good because the very center, you'll see the little diameter of kind of a shiny gray steel wire. And uh, that's when you know you're ready to pop this back out. So let's grind this flat and I'll show you what that looks like. Safety glasses.
Okay, it's really hard to get on camera here, but right in the center, you can see there's kind of like a little one mil gray circle. That's the steel wire, and then the rest is kind of nice shiny copper. Now, you don't want to grind too much of the copper. Really, you don't want to grind anything, but you kind of need to to be able to free it up. Now, once you see that, you can basically just take the wire and tap it on a hard surface or pull it out with a pair of pliers, and you can see already I've got it out there. So just pull this right out, and then uh, we can clean up just what a little bit of steel that's on the edge here, and then we'll set it back up in the machine. Alright, yank that wire out, and really it should go in that hole nice and easy. If it doesn't, you can get a gas welding torch tip cleaner set and just kind of make sure that opens up. And when you put the new wire in, just make sure it goes in fine. You're not kind of trying to force it and you feel friction as you try to put it on the wire. And then this, the, the culprit here, we need to clean this out. And remember, you got the serrations here to clean that. Got all that spatter out so it looks nice and clean. And we're back down to copper, which the spatter does really not like to stick to usually. Okay, now that we got everything cleaned up, it's time to put the wire back in. So go back to your spool, make sure you got no kinks or damage in it. I'm gonna cut it right back to here, but keep a hand on this so that we don't lose that. Pull all these little wire chunks out. Now, there is a hole at the beginning of this feed mechanism. That's where that's gonna go. So feed that in. As you feed your wire through here, there's a little track that the wire needs to stay put in and uh, not a bad idea to check the drive rollers and the plate to make sure everything's set up properly for the size wire you're running. And then there's a groove in this little wheel here on the bottom, make sure it sits in there. And then just kind of help this wire go along and get back into the track that's after that wheel. Like that and help it go into the hole for the liner. So right now I'm feeding it a couple of inches or so into the liner so we're good to go now we can let it go it's not going to move on us so now we have to put this plate back in make sure it goes the right way and these can be just finger tight they don't need to be with a pair of pliers Okay, and then you bring this drive wheel down and set your tension. Now, I already know this machine is set for where it should be, so I'm just gonna swing it back. Uh, but for you, make sure your tension's good. At this point, now comes the fun part. So make sure it's plugged back in. You leave this open or not, that way you can kind of see if there's any issues going on. Turn the machine on and push the button. Now, when you push the button, you should kind of make sure that everything's feeding okay. Don't have a bird's nest starting again for some weird reason. And as long as the wire is feeding, you're good. So you might even start to feel it coming through the liner here. Make sure there's no kinks or anything. And if you don't want to wait all day, you can also crank up the wire speed just to speed up the process. And as soon as you see the wire come out, you're golden. Now, I would do this without the contact tip in there just to make sure you don't have any issues with it binding and jamming on that. And this should be out any second here. I can start feeling it through the handle of the torch. There we go, there's our wire. So shut it off at this point and we're gonna screw on our contact tip and our gas nozzle. Take your contact tip and feed it onto the electrode wire. Spin this in. And you can use the MIG welding pliers to snug it up, but I wouldn't go crazy tight. You know, just give it a little bit of thing so it doesn't loosen up. And then your cleaned out nozzle, put that back on. I would just do this by hand tight. That way it's not crazy tight to get off. And last thing before we start welding is give our little trim or a stick out about three eighths of an inch, half an inch, and uh, we're ready to go. All right, so the bird's nest is all fixed up and we're ready to start welding again. Now, if you continue to have problems with the bird's nest happening pretty much right away, then something you have done here is still not correct. So go back, check the other issues we talked about. Now, there is one other thing we can do here. We talked about one of the most common problems is that spatter starts to build up inside of our nozzle and then eventually stick the wire to the end of our contact tip. So there is another little thing you can do and it's called nozzle dip. 
So the idea behind nozzle dip is basically it makes a thin film on all the stuff inside there, your contact tip, your nozzle, so the spatter hits it, doesn't want to stick to it, falls off, and it keeps it cleaner longer. Now, people kind of think it's like chip dip, where you kind of weld, 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 and you dip it in every now and then, and you just keep welding. That's not how it works. In fact, this is gonna cause a lot of issues and porosity in your welds if you have a lot of it still in there. So here's my suggestion. You don't need it all the time either. What I would do is grab a scrap piece of steel at the beginning of your workday, weld for a good minute or two, get this thing nice and hot, do one little dip down into it, about an inch or so, half an inch, and it'll smoke a bit because it's nice and hot. So that means it'll burn off the extra and kind of leave it still in this container. And then do not start welding because there's still stuff in here that's gonna uh, damage your next weld bead. So same scrap piece of steel, weld for another minute or so, burn off the excess, and then you can put it all away and you're good to go for probably the entire day, depending on how much you're welding. So, like this. Beauty, good to weld, no more spatter the rest of the day. To wrap in another video from Way of the Ranch and on how to become a welder, this time on everything you need to know about a bird's nest in your MIG welder. If you have any questions or concerns, just feel free to put them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And hey, if I was able to help you out with this video, get you back welding, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe from you. And if you want to learn more about welding, learn some cool stuff about what's going on in the shop, you can always follow us on Instagram, Way of the Wrench. Till next time, take it easy.